In this final video on fundamental machine learning algorithms, I'm going to talk about support vector machines and uh, KNERS neighbor, neighbor. A support vector machine is a very powerful and versatile machine learning model capable of performing linear or nonlinear classification, regression, and even outlier detection. It is one of the most popular models in machine learning, and anyone interested in machine learning should have it in their toolbox. A support vector machine, or in short, SVMs, are particularly well suited for the classification of complex but a small or medium sized data set, so not necessarily for the large ones. And uh, I'm going to discuss about, uh, very briefly, about the core concepts of support vector machines here. Uh, the fundamental idea behind support vector machines is best explained with some pictures. Uh, as you can see here on the picture below, uh, on the bottom part of the screen, the two classes can clearly be separated uh, with straight lines. This is why we are saying that they are linearly separable here. The left plot shows the decision boundaries of three possible linear classifiers. The model whose decision boundary is represented as dashed line is so bad that that, not, that does not even separate the classes properly. The other two models work perfectly under this training set, data set, uh, training data set, but their decision boundaries come so close to the instances that the model will probably not perform as well on new instances. In contrast, the solid line in the plot on the right represents the decision boundaries on uh, an SVM classifier, and this line not only separates two classes, but also stays as far away from the closest training instance as possible. You can think of an SVM classifier as fitting the widest street, and that is represented by parallel dash lines between the classes. This is called large margin classification. Notice that adding more training instances off the street will not affect the decision boundary at all. Uh, it is fully determined or supported by the instances located on the edge of the street. These instances are called support vectors, and they are circled here in this figure. If we strictly impose that all instances be off the street and on the right side, this is called hard margin classification. There are two main issues with hard margin classification. First, it only works if the data is linearly separable. And second, it is quite sensitive to outlier. In the figure here, you see that uh, the iris data set with just one additional outlier on the left, it is impossible to find a hard margin. And on the, uh, on the right, the decision boundary ends up very different from the one you saw previously without the outlier, and it will probably not generalize as well. Uh, as already said, uh, support vector machines uh, work well on linear and non-linear classif uh, classifiers classification, but it also support linear and non-linear regression. And the trick is somewhat to reverse the objective. Instead of trying to fit the largest possible street between two classes while limiting margin violation, support vector machine regression tries to fit as many instances as possible on the street while limiting margin violation. And the width of the uh, street is controlled by the hyperparameter epsilon. In this figure, uh, you see two linear SVM regression models trained on some random linear data, and this is what we are going to see in this hands-on practice. Uh, one with a large margin, epsilon 1.5, and the other one with a small margin, 0.5. Uh, 
and adding more training instances within the margin, as you see, does not affect the model's predictions. So we say the model is uh, epsilon insensitive, so it doesn't matter really uh, the epsilon here. So let's get to the coding part and see how it looks in practice. So here is our final hands-on practice for today on linear support vector machine regression. I suggest that you try the classifier yourself on your own time. We, what we do first is to import the usual suspects and then I'm going to build a, a random data set here. This is what's happening here. And then I import the linear support vector regressor I initialize the the model linear uh, SBR and epsilon 1.5 this is the example you just saw and I fit the model okay it's done and and, and I do with both epsilon here and um, the rest of the code is really for the visualization I upload all these codes so you can have time to see uh, how it is done but let's see how it looks now here and this is as you already saw in the previous uh, slides the final fundamental machine learning algorithm that I'm going to talk about is k-nearest neighbor and uh, basically what we're going to talk is that uh, how uh, you can use uh, the same sort of similarity metrics to recommend ISDEM to website users that we normally do in our real life. The algorithm that uh, we're going to talk about, as I said, is called uh, Kenya REST Neighbor, and arguably it is the most intuitive machine learning algorithm that you uh, got to deal with. Indeed, the simplest form of uh, KNN or K nearest neighbor is the sort of algorithm most people would spontaneously invent if asked to make recommendation using similarity data. For example, they'd recommend the song that is closest to the song a user already likes but not yet in the list. And the intuition is uh, simply uh, and one nearest neighbor algorithm. Uh, basically, the, the full K nearest neighbor uh, algorithm amounts to generaliza generalization of this intuition, where you draw on more than one data point before making a recommendation. Uh, the full K nearest neighbors algorithms work much in the way some of us ask for recommendations from our friends. First, we start with the people whose taste we feel, uh, we feel we share, and then we ask a bunch of them to recommend something to us. If many of them recommend the same thing, we deduce that we we'll like it as well. So how can we take this intuition and transform it into something algorithmic? Uh, and let's, let's explain that through some figures here. If you remember how we uh, uh, first talked about logistic regression, uh, we can use logistic regression function to split these points using a single line, which is called decision pantries. At the same time, you should uh, also remember that there are problems that uh, cannot be solved by simply drawing a linear boundary, decision boundary. Uh, so we need to build a classifier that would match a more uh, complicated decision boundary. And uh, how we can do that, uh, an approach would be to use the points nearest to the point that you're trying to classify to make your guess. You could, for example, draw a circle around the point you're looking at and then decide on a classification based on the point within that circles. So this is basically uh, what we call grassroots democracy. The algorithm is actually 
pretty useful, but it has one noticeable flaw. Uh, and shortcoming and we have to pick a radius for the circle we, we use to define local points if all your points have their neighbors at roughly the same distance this won't be a problem but if some points have many close neighbors while others have almost none you will end up picking a circle that is so big it extends well past the decision boundaries for some point and what can we do to work around this problem? Uh, the obvious solution probably is to avoid using a circle to define a point's neighbor and instead look at the k closest point. And these points are called the k nearest neighbors. And once we have them, we can then look at their classification and use majority rule to decide on a class for our new points. So this was somehow the intuition behind uh, K nearest neighbor. And this is the end for the list of fundamental algorithms that you needed to be familiar with. In the next video, I'm going to briefly discuss the anatomy of uh, machine learning algorithms and how machine learning engineers work in real life.